So, so this is uh, uh, the last lecture, sir. Actually, this is my last lecture. This is uh, the last lecture of the school. This is my last lecture of the year, so it's <laughs> the last, <laughs> really, at all. So, um, uh, so I will try uh, to to put uh, all these uh, uh, notes that I wrote uh, actually um, on, on online, so that the I'm I'm trying to finish to complete uh, the program on the notes, so you can you can read it, and it's going probably uh, to be some um, lecture notes written in, in LaTeX. Uh, in the near future, namely maybe for the next year, I'll try to make, because actually uh, the things that I explained in the, in the lecture I gave you, it's uh, rather difficult to find uh, in, uh, in, in notes uh, or in, uh, well, there are in some papers, but they somehow are collectively uh, cost constructed in a more consistent way during the last years, uh, so, uh, so you cannot find easily. Uh, of course, there are some uh, reference book, for example, uh, Green Schwartz written books. I took some mm, uh, material from that book. There is also a uh, quite recent book, for example, if you look at the Zwieback book, uh, the Introduction to String Theory, some of the material is also contained there. But uh, for example, in that, in that book, for example, there is uh, uh, no uh, description about the string field theory or there is no description about the covariant quantization of the models uh, and in particular for super strings uh, there is not such a uh, analysis in that book. There is the book by uh, Polchinski, of course there are a lot of things in that book, uh, but also in that book for example you, you, you don't find a complete discussion about uh, um, covariant quantization. There are of course several bits of these uh, techniques, but for example for the fermionic one for the fermionic string theory, uh, there is uh, not a complete systematic way, for example. I, uh, for example, I construct uh, the, uh, the first uh, states uh, written in a covariant way, but uh, I have to do it by myself, so I couldn't find in books uh, or in papers uh, this construction. It's beautiful how to see all the states emerging from a covariant quantization point of view. For what's concerned pure spin of string theory, which is actually its technique that uh, it came up uh, uh, 15 years ago and it's still, it's, it's still in the making, okay? So uh, the main, uh, the main uh, actor in the pure spin um, comedy is just uh, Nathan Berkowitz uh, in Brazil and actually he somehow he was the first initiate, uh, initiator of this uh, uh, idea and several people uh, um, took it, but actually there was no really uh, either book uh, or um, uh, a reference. There are some lectures that he gave, so there are some uh, proceedings, so there are some uh, papers, but uh, there is no uh, complete um, uh, book about that. So I will try to also to put some notes about uh, this uh, pure spin of string theory in the notes. First uh, by hand and then I will put it in the LaTeX. So, um, and there is also no a uniform uh, view about uh, uh, BRST quantization of, of all these models. There is a nice uh, review by uh, the following people, uh, Gomis. This is Gomis' father, so you know there is a, a Jaun Gomis, which is this, the son of uh, uh, Gomis, and then the one is Samuel, and the last one was... There are three names, uh, Gom, Samuel, and uh, I don't remember the third one, but the, the title is um, uh, BV quantizations. Quantization. And uh, th there is, a, there is a, mm, some lectures. Uh, um, a part of the, uh, these lectures are very, very interesting because it's a systematically uh, systematically explore some of the models th that I also discuss here, but uh, in particular there is a systematic uh, analysis, for example, for string field theory in in, the, in this um, in this framework in this paper. I think it's uh, probably one or two thousand, probably that years. So okay. Um, okay. So today I want to do. Uh, I want to apply some of the idea that uh, I. Uh, I told you to uh, to a string model, okay? To a string model. In particular, I will do it for bosonic strings, okay? For bosonic strings. So uh, I will stick to uh, to 26 dimensions in bosonic strings, and uh, the um, the fields are x mu, and now of course there are 
fields living on the worksheet, so x mu. So I'm, I'm sure that uh, Carlo discussed the quantization of this model. I actually, he discussed the light cone quantizations, the light cone quantization. Hmm? And he arrives uh, to the following constraints. Okay, so the following constraints. Uh, um, uh, so the idea is the following: first, you quantize this model. Okay, of course, in a free theory, so namely in a flat background. So you choose a flat background. Hmm? On the flat background, you quantize the model. So and then you end up with the some constraints which are known as the Virasor constraints. Of Virasor, yeah, Virasor constraints. Constraints, hmm? which can be written in this way. So the Virasor generators uh, written in this way, L M, where M is just integer number Z. Okay, they form uh, a Virasor algebra. Hmm? The form of Virasoro algebra, Lm, Ln. Okay, I put also an X here because I will introduce a new set of, ge uh, of uh, Lorentz generators uh, which are referring to a new set of fields. Uh, okay, so these are the Virasoro generators obtained by, uh, by quantize the, uh, the boson fields, the coordinates fields. So these are fields uh, mapping from this uh, worksheet to uh, a target space, M. And this target space, I will take it flat flat 26 dimensional space uh, hmm? 26 dimensional space and so these are the virasor generator related to those fields and they form an algebra which is just m minus n l m plus n plus an anomaly m hmm? delta m plus n comma zero okay um, so these are the virasor uh, algebra the virasor algebra uh, and this is the what is known also central term or central extension of the Virasoro algebra, which always appears uh, for these models. And then it turns out that you can define physical states, uh, you can define physical states by imposing the following constraints. Lm x acting on uh, some states must be zero for m greater, uh, I put it, uh, yes, uh, greater than zero, and Lm, so L0, x minus 1 acting on the vacuum must be equal to 0. So these two conditions, uh, the two conditions allows you to select the physical states uh, in your theory. And I don't know if Carlo show you, but actually if you do that, uh, it turns out uh, that the Hilbert space uh, has a positive uh, norm, okay? So it is well-defined Hilbert space where you can define uh, physical states. Now, if I follow what actually I did um, uh, in the previous lectures, uh, okay, I, I have to do the following. So these are my constraints, okay, which corresponds to the constraint that uh, I, I, I told you um, for a particle, for super particle. And then I want to uh, somehow to implement these constraints, not in this way, but uh, through a BRST charge. So I need a, a BRST charge, which is a, a nilpotent operator, uh, differential operator, so it must be a derivation, uh, nilpotent, and which implements such a constraints. Okay? So I want to construct uh, how to build uh, a BRST differential operator. In such a way, the cohomology of the B, this BRST, let me call it Q, uh, in such a way that the cohomology of this co leads to the physical states. Mm? So namely, when I computed the cohomology of the BRST operator, it is equivalent to construct uh, such, uh, such a condition. Of course, of course the, the way to build uh, the BRST operator, uh, there is, let's say, 
there is a, a, a path, okay, to do it, okay? The path th is the following. If you have a system, uh, for example, in the case is just a string theory, and uh, the system uh, has a symmetry, a gauge symmetry, in this case it's just a reparameterization symmetry on the worksheet, you, you gauge, uh, namely you fix the gauge for such a symmetry, once you fix the gauge for such a symmetry, you obtain the GOS. That's the usual Fadei Popov BRST technique, which actually it gives you, I mean, a golden path, okay, to get exactly the B such a BS operator. Uh, but I don't want to do it in this way, okay? The reason why I don't want to do it in this way is the following. Because I want to see how much I can get just only uh, by some requirement about what is my BST operator, what are the conditions, so how far I can go without knowing how the BST charge is constructing, okay? so. I I don't know, you follow the usual path, okay? The reason is the following, okay? The reason is the following. As I said, uh, as I told you, there is this pure spin of string theory, which has been b built, uh, uh, let's say, t um, 15 years ago, which was built uh, in, a, in a completely different way. Instead of quantizing the model, so instead of uh, taking a gauge, uh, gauge invariant model, you gauge it uh, in with some gauge fixing, you construct the BRST operator from this gauge fixing, and then you analyze the cohomology of such a BRST operators. N uh, Berkowitz did a very, very uh, funny way. So he just built the BRST operators in such a way that it has the correct spectrum, okay, from a field theory, from a free field theory, okay, which has uh, nothing to do with the original, uh, let's say, gauge invariant model. So there is no such a thing as a gauge invariant model which produ produces such a BRST operator so far. So nobody actually was really able to build the gauge invariant model which produced the BRST charge of, uh, of, the, of the pure spin of sigma model, the pure spin of string theory. Actually, it turns out uh, that this model, this pure spin string model, has the correct spectrum for open uh, string theory, for closed string theory. It reproduces the correct amplitudes. It reproduces the correct partition function. So, all the things that uh, we, uh, has been tried so far of, uh, in this model reproduce the correct uh, analysis done in uh, in other framework. For example, for example, if you want, okay, for example, there is a way to to compute uh, some amplitudes, for example, using green schwartz You the green schwartz you go to the light cone, you compute uh, uh, your vertex operator, you calculate the correlation function with the vertex oper operator. Of course, if you go to the light cone, you're breaking Lorentz invariance. However, even in that uh, Lorentz broken in invariant phase, you still are able to do some calculations, okay? And then once you have uh, your expressions, uh, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, those expressions written in uh, Lorentz um, uh, let's say in uh, Lorentz non-invariant way, are, are can be actually uh, re, uh, recast in such a way they are invariant under the full uh, Lorentz symmetry. Um, however, if you are not lucky, for example, if you do a calculation at one loop, uh, and in that case uh, there are two different invariants which reproduce the same uh, uh, broken um, terms in the um, in the let's say in the lower dimensional case. So therefore. However, using pure spinners, you can calculate the same quantity and actually it matches correctly, okay? And each step of the calculation preserves supersymmetry, I mean target space supersymmetry, it preserves Lorentz invariance. So the idea is actually, so the idea that uh, I came up with uh, this lecture is, okay, forget where this BRST charge comes from, just let's try to see what are the ingredients that I need and then to see if I can, if I'm able to reproduce uh, the correct calculations. So what are the ingredients here? So I have uh, these constraints, okay, so I have an infinite, uh, so I have a set of constraints which is an infinite number of them, okay, and uh, and then I want to build uh, the BST charge. Do you remember the BST charge as always the form, okay, ghost hmm, times constraint plus a term which is ghost, ghost times, times anti-ghost, anti-ghost, okay? So you all always have such a structure, ghost times a constraint, and you're ghost, ghost times an anti-ghost, okay? So for example, do you remember that in the case of, well, in the case of the particle it was too easy because you have a ghost times one single constraint. In this case it was a P square and a ghost C. That's the, the only case in the, in the bosonic particle. What about for a fermionic particle? For the fermionic particle, gamma psi dot p is 
ghost times the constraints plus c p square ghost times c square constraint and here you get uh, like uh, uh, gamma square ghost ghost times an anti ghost okay so this is the structures and then you can uh, fix your coefficient in such a way that is the it is an impotent charge by remembering by, re mm, by remembering the fact that, that this constraints uh, has an algebra. So you remember that uh, we have the following algebra: psi dot p, psi dot p gives you p square, okay? So, p square. So this is an algebra, and uh, using this algebra, you can fix uh, the coefficient here in such a way that uh, the full BRST charge is indeed a nilpotent operator. So. By knowing what are the constraints of your theory, you can build the BRST operator in this case. Okay? So let me do it now for, for the bosonic strings. For the bosonic strings. So what are the constraints? Well, the constraints are generated by those fields, for, by those uh, operators here. So I will put a, a constraint LM, okay, X. And then I should add here some ghost fields. So I will add the following set of ghosts, CM, bn so a set of so these are anti-commuting do you remember that uh, every time i have a bosonic constraints i will put an anti-commuting ghost if i have a fermionic constraints i put the commuting ones okay so those guys are anti-commuting so naming cm cn they do anti-commute bm with the bn they anti-commute but the cm with bm gives you delta m plus n comma zero okay um okay so these are the commutation rules uh, for those fields uh, commutation rules for those fields and then and then the brc charge can be written in this way sum over m goes from from uh, minus infinity to plus infinity of what of a cm lm of x let me see if i write in let me put it in this way hmm? plus and uh, here, now here it comes the uh, the the additional piece. Hmm? So, so here, okay. So the here I wrote down the first term. So this is the first term: constraints times the ghost. However, I need uh, the algebra here. You see, there is this algebra here. There is the al the algebra, okay. And this algebra, it is made, okay. So there is a generator times generator gives you generator, but there is a central term. So there is a still a term central term. So first of all, of course, uh, w the the things is just only to uh, arrange correctly the algebra. So it turns out that this gives you a new terms, which is minus half sum over. So let's say m times n over z. And uh, here we have m minus n of what? Well, there is m b plus n, c minus m, c minus n. OK? c minus m, c minus b. OK. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the, the BRC charge, the BRC charge. So there is a still. Yes. Well, okay. Can you finish? One second. Okay. So there is uh, still one thing that uh, do you remember that the here there is L naught minus one. Okay. So there is one thing that I have to arrange is the following minus. Uh, uh, so there is uh, here the C naught terms here. Okay. In order to take into account this minus one here appearing here, in order to reproduce the correct uh, constraints. Please. What are the questions? Yes, uh, these are these are exactly the structure constants of my algebra, right? No, 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 no. Just only okay. I kn I know what are the structure constants of my algebra here, okay? And I use this here. Well, of course, I can say let 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 leave this arbitrary. Then you make it, it q square. So th then you calculate q square, okay? When you calculate q squares, it always happens the following things. So you calculate Q with Q. This is Q square. Okay. So this means you have a sum. So you have a N times M Z. So here we have C minus M L M. Then we have a C minus N L N. 
Okay. So these, uh, you see, these are anti-commuting fields. Okay. S since C and C has no commutation relation between themselves, but they only anti-commute. Okay. So I can take out these two guys from here, and I put I, and I put them in the same directions. Namely, I put it, I rewrite this expression this way: n m over z, and then I have a c minus m, c minus n, and then here get uh, the commutation relation m l n. Of course, this is still x, like this, okay? So when I pull out the c out of these uh, uh, anti-commutators, I end up with this expression where here I get just a commutation relation. Now you see, this, if I plug the algebra here, okay, this gives you exactly m minus n, l m plus n, okay? So in order to cancel these terms, I have to do something. I have to do something uh, like this. You see, C and B produce uh, just uh, an anti-commutation relations, and this is exactly this what you need in order to cancel this term. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. The fact that uh, uh, I'm writing in this way, okay, is is due to the following. Okay. You see, these guys, this LM carries a conformal weight. Okay. So this M here reproduces the conformal weight, so the dimension of the operator. So, okay. And again, here I, I'm assuming that this M is also is the conformal weight of this object. Okay. In such a way that I compensate in such a way that this has a conformal weight zero, so it's a charge. Okay, is a chart. Uh, of course, uh, you can motivate it in a, in a more rigorous way. Uh, if you, you can motivate it, this from a more rigorous way, uh, in, in this way. Of course, all the theory can be derived from uh, really from um, a free field conformal field theory. Okay, if you use a free field conformal field theory, these generators, these generators here, are related to the mode expansion of the energy momentum tensor. Okay, so uh, the mode expansion of energy momentum tensor. So you can extract this generator here out of these guys here. Okay, the mode expansion of the ghost are obtained by the mode expansion of the ghost field. So this is as conformal minus one fields. Okay, so if you do um, if you do a mode expansion of these things, you get these modes. Then there is uh, these fields B, Z, Z, and Z, which is again a conformal uh, uh, field with the conformal weight plus two. Okay, and that's produced the B, M, N fields. Okay. Now, altogether, the, a charge, a charge, it is always defined in this way. So a charge, it is defined as a, a 1 over 2 pi i of an integral of this type uh, around a given surface, gamma, of what? Of a current gz. Okay? So this is a conformal weight 1 current. Uh, current uh, written, if you like, in this way. Okay, so this is uh, something that you can integrate it, and when you integrate such a things, it doesn't depend on which contour you're picking up. Okay, so this is a well-defined uh, charge. Now, if you do this, and what is the charge that you can put here? Well, the charge, let's say, the current that you have put here is the BRST current, which can be constructed out of this ingredient. Okay, so let's say the let's say the good way to d to see that indeed that there is this matching between the conformal weight, it is obtained by this conformal weight procedure. But uh, I mean, you can you can forget that it's coming from a conformal weight just only by doing this mode expansion and by knowing that uh, those fields has a conformal weight. Now, so now here, now actually we have to study a little bit. Uh, little bit of the space of, uh, yeah, okay. We have to study a little bit of the space of this ghost, okay? So we have this uh, set of ghosts, CM and BM. Okay, so... Wait, uh, Okay. Okay, so so there are two things to uh, yeah, there are several things to uh, to to notice. First of all, first of all, if you write down such an expression, if you write down such an expression, okay, you have to worry about the fact. Uh, you see, there are 
two pieces. This, this expression, this expression. Okay. However, this piece here has a problem that this piece doesn't. Okay. And the problem is the following. You see that I put BCC. Okay, okay. But uh, of course, uh, when I choose BCC, I'm choosing ordering. Okay, so I'm choosing in which order those fields appear. Okay, and and then uh, let's say I will stick to this order. So this means I will put a normal ordering in this way. So this means uh, the following: that uh, some of those fields are uh, 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 to be interpreted as an annihilator operator, and some of those fields are interpreted as uh, a creation operator. Do you remember that, for example, for X fields, when you do qu quantize those fields? You have also mode expansion, which usually are denoted by alpha, m, okay? And also in this case, so there is an index mu, which represents the fact that you have a, a vector here. And so you have uh, some uh, uh, annihilation operator and some uh, creation operator. In particular, usually uh, it, the vacuum is defined in this way, okay? So it's annihilated by all generators, okay? where m is greater than uh, zero, greater or equal to zero, okay? And all the others are indeed uh, creation operator. So this is a state uh, which has a uh, conformal weight n, okay? is written in this, and then you can create uh, other states by acting on these generators, mu, nu, rho, acting on the vacuum, and you create a state of higher uh, higher conformal weight. Okay, so you have a way to count the states in this way. So I want to do the same game, but with these two fields, but with these two fields. And for that, okay, in order to understand this, I need to know what are the Virasoro generators. Hmm? For those fields, okay, the Virasoro generator are the following. Lm or BC, okay, are written in this way as a sum again of P goes to infinity like this. So you have, uh, uh, let me see, yes, M, so J minus 1 minus P times BM plus P of C minus P, hmm? where J is just a conformal weight. In this case, J is equal to 2, okay? J is equal to 2. Mm, these are my... Uh, okay. Now, actually, I can co compute, uh, hmm, by using this, I can compute uh, what are the conformal weight of uh, my fields, uh, okay? Let me, let me put it... Uh, um, yes? Yes, of course, there is a normal order 2 here, okay? But the normal order, in, I mean, you can decide what is the normal order once you have defined what is the vacuum. Okay, so how you define the vacuum? Let's let's first check. Uh, let's first check the conformal weight. Okay, let's check the conformal weight. Uh, and to do that, uh, what I what I have to do is the following. I can compute. Uh, I can compute uh, what is the uh, the action of LM BC acting on the field CM, CN, okay? Or I can compute what is LMN BC acting on the field BN. Hmm? Now, by using this, uh, this formula and using the commutation relations of these fields, delta M plus N times zero, okay, you end up with the following rules. It is minus, 2m plus n, where j, I put the j equal to 2, okay, in this case, and cm plus n, and for what concerns the b, I get something which is m2 minus n of bm plus n. Mm. So these are the, uh, the operation, the operator lm acting on the field c, and it produces this analysis, okay? Now, if you want to see what is the energy of the states, the energy of the states, uh, you see immediately that L0 BC acting on CM gives you, you immediately see, so this is zero, so this is zero, so you get a minus N CN and in the same way, L0 of BC system acting on BN gives you minus NBN. 
Hmm? So you see the following, that uh, the, uh, uh, the fields uh, Cn and Bm have uh, uh, the following energy, okay? So it's the following energy, okay? So it's, then it's uh, clear that uh, you, uh, if you choose as a creation operator the generators minus n, okay, so or, or b minus of b minus n, okay, where n for n positive, okay, for n positive, then automatically those object has a positive energy, okay, a positive energy, and then the cho the choice of the vacuum is the following: choice of the vacuum. Is the following. So you choose the vacuum, uh, the, vo uh, the vacuum in the following. Cn acting on zero mm -hmm. on the vacuum is equal to zero if n is greater than one. Mm -hmm. Is greater than one. Okay. So this means, um, right, is greater than one. So this means that uh, uh, those are uh, C2, C3, and so on. Okay. CP acting in the vacuum give you zero when P is greater than zero, greater than one, sorry. Okay. But you also have the generator C1, C0, and also C minus one acting on the vacuum, and those are uh, positive energy fields. Except, except this C1, which is rather important here. Okay. On the other side, the vacuum, the choice of the vacuum for BN acting on zero, it is equal to zero when n is equal, is greater than minus two. Mm. The reason for this choice is the following. Let me show you what is the reason of this choice. Well, one reason is that, okay, by using this, it reproduce correctly the, the constraints, okay? One, let's say, one, one, one way to motivate uh, such, a, uh, such, a uh, such a definition of the vacuum is that uh, if you choose the vacuum in this way, then automatically the BRC charges that are built uh, acting on the vacuum or in physical states, because of this condition, it will produce the correct constraints uh, for the physical states. However, there is another way to, to see, actually, that this is true, okay? And the, the way is the following. If you, as I said, the BM, Okay, are the modes for the BZZ field. Okay, so this is a, what is a conformal, conformal weight plus two free field. Mm -hmm. So if you have a conformal weight plus two free field, so this means that, that this BZZ can be written as a Laurent expansion of this type. Sum goes from uh, so n over z, okay, of this type, bn over zn plus two, okay. So this is the Laurent expansion of of a, of a field which has conformal weight to two. So this factor two here appearing in the numerators, well, in the exponent of the, numer of the denominators, it corresponds to the, uh, to, the, to the conformal weight of these fields, okay? Then I want to, uh, to define what is the uh, operator state correspondence. Hmm? Operator state com com uh, correspondence uh, in conformal field theory conformal field theory, this means that I have to take the limit of z goes to zero, hmm? limit of z goes to zero of the bzz z acting on the vacuum, acting on the vacuum, okay? Now, this gives you what? Well, let's see what happened here. So if you apply to this decomposition, it turns out that if the vacuum satisfies such conditions. So if a vacuum uh, satisfies such a condition, this gives you something which is, uh, so it, uh, it is well defined. Hmm? It is well defined. 
and uh, because otherwise if this is the vacuum is not defined this way you see there are of course there are singular terms in this Laurent expansion so when you act on the vacuum you take the limit z to zero the singular part uh, is going to explode uh, is going to diverge so unless you impose any condition on the vacuum of these types then automatically you, you get something reasonable from this okay so this is the choice of the vacuum Let's see now, okay. So let me show you first uh, before going to, let me show you a little bit ab about uh, the Hilbert space, okay? Now, if you have uh, such a, such a set, uh, set up, uh, hmm? So how the Hilbert space is defined? Uh, by, by the way, um, all these things uh, that I'm discussing here, uh, you will find in lectures, books, uh, Polchinski books, for example, Green Schwartz books, okay. What I'm not go going to say now, uh, you don't easily find in the books. So I'm trying to give you, uh, to tell you what actually you don't find in the books, okay? So um, the address you can easily find. Okay, let me see what are the, how the Hilbert space is defined. Let's see, let's compute at the Q equal to zero. So this means conformal weight zero, zero, okay? Um, No, sorry, sorry, there is a, no, no, sorry, there is a, even one, there is a conformal weight minus one. Hmm? So this is a, conf Q corresponds to the conformal weight, conformal weight minus one, okay. Conformal weight minus one, it is very interesting because, uh, 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 you know, the conformal weight Q equal minus one, it does correspond which mass uh, level of the mass uh, uh, I'm, I'm talking about okay so what let's see what are the operator in this Hilbert space of the BC systems have exactly such a conformal weight the only things you see the only things that you have here okay you have here uh, um, it, it is the, these guys C, C1 okay you see C1 has a conformal weight which is a mi uh, minus one C1 okay minus one you see let me make let me make a, a table hmm? the table is the following so we have a let me write down the table yes in this way so this is the the, the conformal weight hmm? and these are my fields so i have a c1 this is conformal weight minus one so i have a c0 which is conformal weight uh, zero C uh, minus one, conformal weight plus one, C minus two, conformal weight two, and so on, okay? But let's see what happened for the B. You see, the B is defined in such a way that the first object that appears here, okay, in, uh, as a creation operator, it is B minus two. So I have to arrive here to B minus two to have something which is a conformal weight to two. I don't have any, any those guys, B minus one, B zero, or B1, those are uh, annihilation operators. So th they, they do annihilate the vacuum, okay? So the first B that I encounter, it is B minus two, okay? First things, okay? So let me see what are the first states that I encounter at this level. So I need, uh, so the first things I need is conformal weight minus one, is this one, okay? So the first states that I can build up is this one, C minus one acting on the vacuum. But there is another one. There is another one which is uh, C naught C minus one. Yeah. Do you remember that when actually we discussed the particle, for example, they we found out uh, two states: one with the function f, and one which is was uh, C times another functions. Okay. And uh, here again, it always happen. Uh, it always happens that we have a duplication of the cohomology. Let's say a duplication of the Hilbert space. So there is one state here and one state here. And the difference between these two states is just the Gauss charge. Gauss charge, okay? So let's assign a Gauss charge in this way. So the Gauss charge, let's, let me just 
the Gauss charge of C is equal to plus 1, and the Gauss charge of B it is equal to minus 1. Okay? So, you see, this states as a Gauss charge plus 1, and this states as Gauss charge plus 2. Okay? So, so this is a Gauss charge plus 1, Conformal weight minus one fields, okay? This is the Gauss charge plus two, conformal weight minus one fields. So what is the interpretation of these two fields? So this is a tachyon. This is the, the tachyon in string, in, uh, sorry, in bosonic strings. It is uh, represented by these states, which is as conformal weight minus one times uh, uh, Gauss number one, okay? Of course, when you add, when you add also the bosonic fields axis, okay, when you add the bosonic fields axis, you have to remember that uh, the Hilbert space, it is not only made of this. So the Hilbert space is also generated by what? By the center of the mass of the strings, which are the zero modes, okay, times also the, the, uh, let's say, the creation operator of these types, okay? So you have a whole set of Hilbert space of these types. Now, of course, any of this uh, uh, operator here will increase the, the energy of the states. So any operator of these types uh, increase the energy, but of course I can take a function of the, of the center of the mass of the strings, okay? So this means this guy can be written as a function of x naught of c minus one, this one. So, so this is the state, this is just the tachyon field. So this is really the tachyon field. Tachyon field. Hmm? The tachyon field, uh, which is uh, just a, a, f a scalar. You see, it's a scalar from a target space point of view. It depends on the coordinate where the string is. So this is uh, the zero mode of the coordinates times the ghost minus one, zero. So this is the form the covariant expression for the tachyon fields in the bosonic strings. Okay, so but what is this guy here? What is this guy here? Okay, well again, of course I can multiply this by a function, okay, c minus one c, okay, and this is the anti-field of the tachyon. So is the anti-field of the tachyon. You see, between the field and the field, there is a, a plus one Gauss difference, okay? It is again a scalar. It depends on the coordinate of the strings. And this is just the states of the tachyon. Let's, let's, let's go on, okay? Let's see what happened at the first level, uh, at the first uh, uh, excited level, okay? So to the next level, okay? Let me put also here, let me put here also, uh, so we have uh, x naught mu, which has conformal weight zero, and uh, I will write down in this way, x minus one mu to represent this alpha, so this is conformal weight plus one, and then here we have x mu minus two, which is conformal weight plus two. Uh, okay. Of course they have Gauss number zero, so since they have Gauss number zero, I can put a function of this, okay? A function of this. Yes, please. What are these x's? The x's, okay, is just the name, okay. I just use x minus one mu or minus n to, this is coincided with this alpha minus n that the Carlo was saying in his lectures, okay. I just use this notation because then, uh, well, I can use the notation alpha, but I don't understand why one has to use a different notation for those things. So I just use the x's. It is easier, let's say, visually to build up the, the Hilbert space. Let me check what happens at Gauss number zero. At Gauss num uh, sorry, uh, the conformal weight zero in this space. Now, this is really beautiful. Okay, let's see what happened here. We have uh, the following states. Okay, we have, uh, of course, the vacuum. The vacuum is uh, this conformal weight zero object uh, state. Okay. And then what is the next? Well, you see the next, I can build up something which is conformal weight if I multiply C1 and C minus 1. So I have a C1, C minus 1, 0, okay. This is, of course, another state. However, however, you see, uh, I can also have another object which has conformal weight 0, which is C0. So let me put here, like, C0, this one, 
Okay. And finally, I can build up something which is ghost number three, C0. C1, C minus one, zero. Okay. Let's, let's check the ghost number. The ghost number. This is ghost number zero. This is ghost number one. This is ghost number two. And this is ghost number three. Okay. All of them have conformal weight exactly zero. Okay. All of them have conformal weight zero. Good. Okay. So this is a massless sector. Massless sector. Hmm. Massless sector of the theory. And you see again that uh, here there's a line. And you see, you see there are two states, ghost number zero and one, and two states between ghost number two and three. Okay? Yes. No, here I cannot build up here because C1, C, you say C1, C1, C minus 2, okay? But C1 square is 0 because they are nilpotent, okay? So these are the only states that they can create. So what? C? C. 2C? C2? This one? But this is just annihilation operators, okay? Is an annihilation operator, so acting on the vacuum, this is zero. So I can only use I can only use this with the minus signs. Okay, okay. So in this way, there is no ambiguities. Okay. So if you build the the, the states in this way, you create the full tower here. So let's see what is the interpretation of those fields. Okay. What is the interpretation of those fields? Um, okay. Right. Uh, you see. Again, I can do the same gain as before. Namely, I can multiply each of them. I can multiply each of them by a function. So here we have a function. Let me call this function here c of x naught times this one. Here I can build up also a function. So let me call this function. I don't know how to call it. F of x naught c naught. This one. Okay. <coughs> and then uh, here. This object I can uh, let me let me call it f star x naught of uh, c one c minus one z, and this one I will going to call it c star c naught. So this is a function of x naught c zero c one and c minus one. Okay, but I I'm not done yet because you see if I at this level if I'm in this level. You see, it happens the following, that okay, at the Gauss number, uh, so conformal weight zero, I can build something else uh, in, in this way. You see, these guys here, now is a conformal weight plus one, okay? Since this has a conformal weight plus one, I can build something new, which is the following. I can build something which is the following, which is uh, C1 X minus one mu acting on the vacuum. You see, this has a conformal weight uh, zero again because uh, the weight it, it compensates it is one minus one conformal weight zero has Gauss charge plus one. Of course, I can put also a function in front. Let me call this function in this way. You see, this is not a, one single function; is a vector which has an index here, which come which uh, contract with this index. And this object, of course, this guy is a conformal weight expression here because it contains only zero mode, okay? And then here there is a uh, ghost number one, sorry, ghost number one. So these guys here, let me put uh, just, uh, okay. These two guys have conformal weight zero, Gauss charge, uh, Gauss charge plus one. Okay. Now here I can also add another object, which is the following: a mu star x naught. Then I will have something which is. Uh, uh, let me see. Yes, it is a c zero c one x minus one mu acting on the vacuum. So these two guys here, this one, and these guys here. Okay, have Gauss number plus two, conformal weight Q equal to zero. So this is Gauss number plus one and conformal weight Q equal to zero. Hmm? So these guys here, let me put in, in yellow, okay? These guys as conformal weight uh, 
zero, Gauss number zero, and these guys here, it is conformal weight uh, zero, Gauss number three. Okay? Let's do the counting. Let's do the counting. Okay? Let's do the counting. Okay? Uh, the count is the following. This gives you one state. Okay? One state, is, uh, one state means a state times a function. Okay? So, uh, okay. This is one state. Now, this sector here gives you one state, which is this one. Okay? And then from this, Hume, you see how many states? Well, I count how many functions I have here. I have a mu, which goes from 0 to d, or 26, whatever. So I have a 1 plus d states here. So, so uh, let, let me put it like this. Ghost, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Conformal weight is always 0. Okay, like this. Okay. <coughs> And then here it is, again, you see, I can count 1 plus w d, so 1 plus d, and also the last one is 1. Okay. Good. Now I can do the following. I want to rewrite this expression. You see, this expression, it is a, it is a, a typical, let's say, a typical um, polynomial. Let's say these are kind of... Uh, coefficient of a polynomial. Do you remember like a polynomial like uh, 1, 3, 3, 1 that you get uh, in the Tartaglia triangle when you do the composition of, bino of, uh, of uh, Newton polynomials, okay? This looks like, like this, okay? In order really to, to assign a polynomial, I'll do the following. I assign, okay, I put uh, here a, a, a power of t, okay, I put the power of t um, times the power will be just the Gauss number. So this will t0, Okay, this is just t to the 1, this is t to the 2, and this is t to the 3. Okay, so I just put a, a t here, okay, I will, I, will, uh, I will write down the formula for you, which actually uh, clarify exactly what I'm doing here. Let me do one, one more thing. You see, this guy is a bosonic, is a bosonic state, because this is a bosonic quantity, and this is just a, a function. Okay. These two guys are anti-commuting quantities. So this is uh, an anti-commuting quantity. This is also anti-commuting quantity. But these are bosonic again, and this is only anti-commuting. So the fact that so uh, statistics. This is plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one. Okay. So this means this has a, a one. I put a minus sign here to take into account the statistics. So this becomes a plus to take into account the statistics. And finally, this is minus one. So what is this expression? This expression, this expression here, it is called a character. This expression here, it is called a is character. It is defined in this way. It's just a trace on the Hilbert space H of what? Of minus one F times T to the Gauss number times Q to L naught. Okay? So this means the following. This expression take into account the Gauss number, namely when, when you find a state which has a given number of the Gauss number, that gives you power of t. This q is just what is called a, a modular parameter, for example, that you've seen in lectures by Harvey and maybe also Carlo talked about that. So there is a modular parameter times to L naught, which is just the, the uh, Virasor generator L naught. Okay. Now, this expression here, of course, you see, this expression here, it's a polynomial in t, it is a polynomial in q, and this minus 1f is just taking into account the fermion number. Now, each ghost carries a fermion number because those are, are commuting fields. So if I have a one ghost field, fermion number is minus 1. If I have two ghost field, like ghost number plus, uh, fermion number plus 2, and so on, okay? Now, of course, this is a polynomial, okay? A polynomial, so we'll have a, a polynomial 0 at uh, t plus q of polynomial uh, 1 at t and so on. Okay, so uh, if I do a, a serious function in q, okay, I have something, well, I can have also something which is a non-polynomial, which is 1 over q of p minus 1 t. And so, so, I don't... Sorry, sorry, yes? Right. No, you, here? Here? 
here. This is plus one. Yes, I, I just only. Okay, okay. So it was the 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 bar of the plus was a little bit shifted. <laughs> I wrote it too fast. So it's this right. It's a, so of course it's alternating sum. Okay, okay. And this minus one is taking into account such a, such alternating sum. So I'm saying here, look, if you if you do an expansion of Q, it is not really a polynomial. It's not really a it is not a Taylor series. It is Laurent series. So we could have also poles of Q. Okay. Now these guys here is just the tachyon sector. Tachyon sector. This is just a massless sector. And then this is the first massive state, massive sector. And then second massive state. So if you take an expression like this, which is called a character, okay, it, doesn't, it is not really a partition function. It is a character. Namely, it distinguishes it distinguish between different types of states uh, by adding a charge which allows you to distinguish your different states. For example, uh, yeah, Gauss number 0 gives you a constant. Gauss number 1 gives you a function a linear in T and, and so on. Okay. So this expression here, uh, what should I do? Uh, because I want to do two things. Let me do the following. I just repeat my little table here. Like the table is the following. So I see one, C zero, and C minus one, C minus four. Conformal weight Q is uh, minus one, zero, one, uh, two. Uh, Ghost is always plus one. So you have also b minus 1, b minus 2, and so on, which is a conformal weight 1, 2. And also we have x minus 1 mu, x minus 2 mu. So they have a uh, conformal weight 1 and 2, and goes number 0. I think, yeah, this is my table that I need. So I can erase this. Because now I want to show you the interpretation of this uh, sector. Okay, so this is just uh, the P naught T. Okay, the, the it's also known as a Poincare polynomials. Okay, Poincare polynomials, which take into account uh, all these states. Okay, good. Now, there is two ways to two ways to read such an object. Okay, there is two way two ways to read uh, this object. Okay, the first way. The first way is uh, by BV formalism, or let's say string field theory. And the second way, uh, target space physical Degrees of freedoms. Degrees of freedom. Okay. Let me show you how I can do the, the following analysis. Okay. Before that, let me let me do let me write down also the character for the tachyon. Now we have learned how to do it uh, for the tachyon. What I need. Okay. Look here. I have something which has. Conform uh, well, the conformal weight is uh, minus one. Okay, so that will be my f my first terms of the polynomial, which is uh, p minus one t. Okay, let's write down the polynomial. Okay, here I have a one function, so one state, one, conform uh, uh, Gauss number plus one. So I will put a t. Okay, but it's a Gauss charge um, plus one. So th this has an anti-commuting quantity, so a minus sign. Okay, so the minus sign is coming from minus one to death. The one is coming in just the counting of how many states I have of the same, of the generacy of the states. And T just count the Gauss charge. And then from this, I, I will get what? I get one state, one. So this goes number plus two, so T to the square. And then this is a, uh, is a commuting quantity, so it's plus one. Okay, so let me write down this is minus t plus t square. Okay. Let me rewrite this in the following way. It is 1 minus t times minus t. 
Okay? I wrote it in this way. You see, uh, okay, now again here there are two interpretations. There is an interpretation of from a string field theory point of view, and there's an interpretation of for physical uh, target space uh, theory. The interpretation of for, for, uh, from string, uh, string field theory point of view, it, it, it follows, in, it, it works in this way. Hmm? Do you remember? Do you remember that in my uh, first lectures, okay, I told you the following: in order to define what are the the BV fields or the string fields, okay, you need something which is called a BV symplectic form. The BV symplectic form, which is uh, which is constructed in this way, is just the integral of dx naught, okay. And then here you need uh, an integral of the of of the uh, of the ghost. Okay, so here let me put here just uh, one second. Yes, uh, C. There are three ghosts: C one, C one, and D C minus one. Okay, three ghosts. That will tell you why they are coming three ghosts here. And then I will put something which is just uh, this chi, where chi. Uh, yes, it's just uh, this, uh, the, the combination of the two objects, uh, which is what? C minus 1, 0, plus G, which is a C1, C0, C minus 1, in this way. Okay, let me, first, let me first do the calculations. Let me first do the calculations, and then uh, I will tell you why I should uh, have three ghosts here. Do you remember that uh, in a bosonic particle I have one single ghost? Okay, in a bosonic particle there was one single ghost. Here there are three of them. Okay, I will tell you why this, uh, where these three comes from. Okay, uh, yes. Let me let me first do the calculation. If I do the calculation, I first have to calculate uh, the uh, the conjugate of the states. If I co take the conjugate of the states, it happens to follow. The function f and g, I take it real. Okay, I take it this real function f. Okay, so but the, the conjugate of this conjugate of c minus one is equal to c one. Okay, so the conjugate. Okay, this is uh, needed in order to have a, a Hermitian uh, Lagrangian, let's say. And uh, I mean, the, the in such a way that you preserve the, the unitarity, you need this uh, emission, emitticity um, conditions. So this gives you F, so it gives you 0, C1, F. I can take it also. No, okay, uh, I'll do it simply, okay? So I get uh, what? C1, C0, and G in this way. Okay, let's do the calculation. If I do the calculation of this type, okay, what I get here, okay? I don't have uh, any more space. Let me go here. Okay, so if you do the calculation, this BV symplectic forms gives you D and, uh, so this was D X naught, DC naught, DC one and DC minus one. I have to tell you why three of them, but uh, then I will come to this point. And then you see the following, that uh, these guys gives you uh, this, then you give you C1, F, okay? And, and uh, this naturally pair with these guys here, which is G, C0, C-1, 0, okay? And there is also the other one, which is the G times F, okay? So there is a double it two of them right um, now you see here there's two function f and g we can, we can, which I can take out of this uh, expression here and then I have a ghost c1 c0 and c1 and here exactly I have a three integrals do you remember that those are anti-commuting variables for each of them I have to use Berezin integral and then you remember that the Berezin integral of a variable C0 this means derivative respect to C0 Berezin integral of variab variable C1 is just derivative respect to C1 and again for C-1 so this means if you do the calculation the whole thing gives you just D dx0 times F times G okay uh, so this is uh, interpreted as the field and this is interpreted as the anti-fields, okay? And now, as I said here, is a, uh, as I said here, this guy is just uh, the tachyon fields, and this is the anti-tachyon fields, so the anti-fields of the tachyon. Of course, 
if you if you if you want to see a tachyon, okay, you should get the, the tachyon Lagrangian. A tachyon Lagrangian is what? It is a Klein Gordon equations, a Klein Gordon operator, with a mass with the wrong sign. Okay. Okay. Can I do it? Well, using exactly the same means that I, I was telling you for the bosonic strings, you can calculate the action for the tachyon, which is that the integral of dx naught. Now here we have uh, these three ghosts, C, dc1 and dc minus 1, and then I have a chi, and then here what should I put? Well, I put just the Gauss charge, uh, sorry, the BRST charge, a chi. Now, you see the following, you see the following. For the, for the bosonics, bosonic particle that you see in the first lecture, this is, was absent, okay? This was absent. I have only one ghost. The BST charge has ghost numbers plus one. So I'm picking up from these two guys just the ghost number zero part. Now here I have three of them, three of them. So this means that this is ghost number one. But then I have to pick it up from this ghost number one and ghost number one. Okay. Do you remember that in one example, for example, the, the topological particle, the topological particle in three dimensions, I really had to have a Gauss number one for the states, Gauss number one for the BST charge. Now, if you do the calculation and leave you by exercise, we will find in the notes, that's exactly reproduce the tachyon action, namely Klein-Gordon Klein -Gordon equation. So if you like, uh, the equation will turn out to be the following. So if you do the calculation, you get a D, x naught, then we have f box plus 1 of f. Hmm? Box 1 of f. Which gives you the uh, decline, uh, so the gives you the mass, uh, the, the tachyon fields. Okay? So I, I, I'm, I, I'm not really speaking about string field theory because string field theory means that uh, uh, you have to take into account the full Hilbert space. If you take the full Hilbert space and you plug back in this equation and you do this expansion, you end up not with a single action. I mean, you get the action for all the fields, okay? The action for infinite number of the fields, okay? So this means that you see from uh, from uh, from a uh, uh, BV or let's say from a string field theory point of view, the way to interpret the, these two states, this is just a tachyon, and this is the anti-field of the tachyon. What is the, the interpretation in this case? Well, the interpretation in this case is the following. You see, I can take the following. I can take the limit. Hmm? I take the limit. T goes to one of what? Of a p minus one. T over 1 minus T, and this gives you minus 1, okay? This gives you minus 1, okay? So I remove this one. Why I remove this one? You see, every time I compute a cohomology in this way, I get uh, just a duplication of the cohomology. So here, uh, the compilation of my Hilbert space. So this is my Hilbert space on this part, and then uh, here I have a duplication of the same Hilbert space, okay? So this duplication is... It, it, it is, let's say, it is re re reflected from this point of view that for each field, you have uh, your corresponding anti-fields, okay? So each field, you have a corresponding anti-fields, okay? Uh, and this duplication, let's say, this uh, doubling of the, of the sector means the following, means the following. Let, uh, I, tell, I told you that uh, the, the BV variation of the field in the case of the tachyon is zero, and the variation of the antifield for the tachyon is just the equation of motion of the of the field. Okay, in, in the in the case of the bosonic particle, uh, in, the case of, in the case of the bosonic particle, the variation of the field was zero, and the variation of the antifield was just uh, the Klein-Gordon equation. So this part is missing in in, in the in the calculations. Okay, the, but you got the only box here for the tachyon. You get this one. And this one is just the mass of the tachyon. Okay, now you see that the by the, this duplication of the duplication of the, the cohomology here, let's say every time you, you, you cohomology of the Hilbert space, so every time you have a states here, you have a corresponding states on the other side, means that for every field you have an antifields, okay? But you see the variation of the antifields here gives you just the equation of motion. Okay, so this means that by divided by one minus t and take the limit equal to zero, so you are having on shell. So this operation here means putting the physical field on shell. 
Okay? So the two interpretation, the two interpretation is the following. Look, if I consider such a, such an expression, this character formula, and I read from this point of view, I'm reading the string field theory interpretation, or let's say BV formulation, which gives me gives me an action for these fields, something which is off-shell. So I'm considering not the first Quantstein model, but really off-shell uh, expression of these fields. When I do the following, so I put them 1 minus t and take the limit t equal to 0, I'm putting the fields on the sh on shell. So from this point of view, I'm not calculating action. I'm really reading what are my physical states. Now, this gives you what physical state? Well, this is the tachyon, really the tachyon in the light cone quantization that you have seen with Carlo. And Carlo in bosonic strings, uh, he shows that in the open strings, open bosonic strings uh, in the light cone, there is one state which has conformal weight minus one, which is exactly the tachyon here. So here there is a covariant way, a covariant way to see the tachyon out of the spectrum. Okay, yes? Right? Yes. To to do to 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 see the ion fields appear in the action, you see, here you have to saturate Gauss number three. Okay. So the charge at Gauss number z one. So this means I can have something which has Gauss number zero or Gauss number two. The the part which contains Gauss number one, Gauss number one, is picking up exactly uh, exactly the, uh, the the physical fields. Okay, so the physical fields are always sitting at Gauss number plus one, plus one, okay. The other things, you see, Gauss number zero and Gauss number three, okay, they appear fields or, or Gauss or anti-fields for them, okay. So if you do the expansion, not only just to Gauss number one, but Gauss number zero and two, you get uh, all the other things, namely anti-fields in the action, okay. Uh, uh, there is a beautiful review, there is a beautiful review by Barton Zwieback, 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 right, okay. There is a part uh, uh, about um, uh, BV formalism and closed string field theory, okay. Uh, so you can read uh, uh, part of this uh, that I'm discussing here in this beautiful uh, review. Uh, there is also, what else? Uh, let me see if I remember. I will put also reference in the, in the notes so you can see also. Uh, you, you don't, I mean, this is something that uh, I've been elaborating during the last years, so you, you don't find in several books. You have to dig out from the notes. Yes, please? No, f has goes. Oh, I mean, the function f has always goes number one. No, this has goes number two, and the g has goes number zero. I mean, g is a function of x. How can I have a Gauss number? Right. They are. Yeah, they are different Gauss numbers. Yes, it's, it's not a uniform uniform sum. It's a direct sum of object. It is like when you sum up uh, uh, differential form Gauss number uh, degree one or degree two, degree three. It's an ext I mean, a generalized form in this way. Yes. Okay. So, okay. So let's see. Let's see what happened here. Let's see what happened here, which is uh, very, very beautiful. Okay. Let's see. Now, of course, I, I can go through. I can do the BV calculations. I can do the action, for example. Uh, yeah. But let's see if you can interpret. I, I, let's see if you can interpret this object here, this polynomial here, from uh, these two points of view. So one point of view is just uh, from BV formalism, or let's say from string field theory point of view. Namely, if I construct the action, I get uh, the off-shell action for this multiplet. So this is, a, of course, is a multiplet. Okay, let's see what happened. Okay, the interpretation is the following: these guys here. It's called the ghost, C, the target space ghost. So I, that's the ghost of the gauge symmetry on the target space. These guys here is just the gauge field, A mu. Hmm? So these guys here is the anti-field for the gauge field. And this guy here is the anti-ghost. It's the anti-ghost of the... Uh, it's the anti-ghost for the... 
It's the antifield for the ghost. Let me uh, just only to see the formula. One second, I'm coming. Okay, yes. Yeah, I mean, this counts how many states you have there, okay? Right, right. Yes, yes, because divide by 1 minus t, somehow you're removing the antifields, and you put in t equal to 0, you're going on shell. No, no, it's always 1 minus t. Yes, because you always have uh, one duplication. It's, it's due to the, this uh, funny ghost, uh, See not uh, that he produced the duplication of the cohomology. Yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is beautiful. I mean, I I in the case of uh, of bosonic strings, it's just this ghost. In the case of Ramon and Schwartz, uh, you have a, a more complicated uh, situation, but you always happen like this. Let me show you now the interpretation of this uh, expression. Okay, so as I said. The interpretation of from uh, string field theory point of view is just uh, the ghost. So the, what is the ghost? So this means the following. So the BRC transformation of the gauge field is just uh, d mu of c. Hmm? D mu c, okay. And, uh, and so on. So the equation, so the, the equation more, let's say the BRC, uh, so I did it like this. The, the BRC transformation of these guys give you the equation motion for this and so on, okay. However, however, I want to do it uh, on shell. Okay, let me do it on shell. So I can rewrite uh, this expression as the following. Okay, so this is a p naught t, which is equal to one minus t. Okay, this is uh, one minus d t plus t square. Okay. Let, let's now compute on shell. So I have a limit t goes to 1 of p naught t gives 1 minus t. That gives you, and then I take the limit t equal to 1, so I get 1 minus d plus 1. This gives you 1, so let me put the minus sign in front, d minus 2. Okay, so these are exactly the degrees of freedoms of on shell on shell uh, gauge boson massless massless gauge field massless gauge field okay Masses gauge field. You see, if you look at this expression here, okay, you can read also from this expression here how it, it works. You see, this is just the gauge field, and these two guys are the ghost and anti ghost. I don't know if you remember when you when you quantize, for example, Maxwell theory. Okay, you want to quantize uh, Maxwell theory. How you do it? Okay, so Maxwell theory has the following uh, action. Maxwell, okay? So I have a Maxwell theory. I have a 1 over quarter minus integral of d. Let's do it in d dimensions. So f mu nu, f mu nu, where f mu nu is just d mu a nu minus d nu a mu, okay? So you know that the Maxwell theory has a gauge symmetry. S of a mu is equal to d mu c. I will write it as a BRST symmetry. So the, uh, this gauge field goes under the, such a gauge transformation. And of course, the field strength f mu nu is equal to zero. Mm -hmm. So this action is gauge invariant. So how, c how you do the quantization of, uh, of the Maxwell theory? This is just a one minute uh, crash course on quantization of Maxwell theory. So uh, you have to do gauge fixing. Okay, how you do gauge fixing? Well, gauge fixing, let's choose uh, the simplest gauge fixing. Let's say 
uh, Landau Feynman gauge field, uh, gauge fixing, like D mu, A mu. So how can I do that? I have to add to the action, I have to add to the action, a gauge field, a gauge fixing, but how can I do that? Well, let me introduce an anti-Gauss field, an anti-Gauss field, in such a way the transformation of this anti-Gauss field is just a Lagrange multiplier, okay? This Lagrange multiplier is called Nakanishi Lautrup Lagrange multiplier, if you want to search in the literature. And this operator must be nilpotent. So if this is nilpotent, I mean S square gives you SC is equal to zero, and S square on rho gives you zero. Okay? Let's do gauge fixing now. The way to do it is the following. Just add to the action S of C bar of D mu A mu. Hmm? So I modify the action by adding to an action something which is BRST exact, okay? So this is the usual BRST quantization procedure for the Maxwell theory. Let's do the calculation. Le okay, I just rewrite down here on, on the side your expressions. So you have S A mu is equal to D mu C. S of C is equal to zero. S of, of uh, C bar gives you rho. S of rho gives you zero. So these are the BRST transformations of the gauge field. So this is just the BRST gauge fixed action, gauge fixed action. Let me do the calculations, so minus one quarter, d to the d x, f mu nu, f mu nu, let, uh, yeah, plus, the, let's do the calculation. You see, c of uh, c bar give you rho of d mu a mu, hmm? and then when s goes over, you get a minus sign, hmm? minus sign, c bar, d mu, d mu of c. Hmm? So you see, I generated exactly the kinetic terms for the Gauss field. So this is just the kinetic terms of Gauss field. So this is just the gauge fixing, and this is the usual Lagrangian. Now, if you take the equation of motion for rho, you're just imposing the gauge fixing. Those, this goes drops away, so you have to fix the gauge. And so at the end, you, when you have done everything, you end up in action, which is the following, d dx, which is a mu box of a mu, minus d bar d square c, well, let me, let me call it box, okay? So this is just uh, the, um, the Lagrangian, the kinetic terms for the gauge field, this is just the kinetic Gauss, Gauss field. Now, of course, you see, this has a d degrees of freedom. d degrees of freedom are exactly this d degrees of freedom, okay? So this is coming from a mu part. The box here, the box here tells you, look, this is just one minus t, which puts the theorem on shell, okay? Let's see, but here we have uh, still uh, two degrees of freedoms, okay? One, which is the ghost, one other, which is the anti-ghost. Now here they are. So this is the ghost, and here, this is the anti-ghost fields. So you see that the minus sign appearing is different because the statistic is exactly the opposite statistics. And this means when you take the limit equal to one, they do cancel d, okay? And you end up with d minus two degrees of freedoms, okay? So, Let's say the way to read, the way to read this expression from a, from a physical point of view, it's uh, very nice. But uh, let me try to convince you that is, um, yes? Of the minus sign, yeah, for every phys physical field there is a minus sign because the product uh, in the, in the string field theory is a C, C, and C. There are three ghosts. So this, the minus sign is coming from that, okay? I still have to tell you why you have three ghosts. Let me do it, uh, but I will, f I'll, uh, I will not do it completely. I will not do it completely, but uh, I will just uh, sketch it, okay? If I want to do it uh, at the next level, okay, now you have all the ingredients, you can play, instead of doing enigmistics, you can do just uh, Hilbert space of uh, string theory. It's much, much better than uh, enigmistics. And, uh, and you can try to construct your Hilbert space, okay? Let's go, let's go to the Q equal to one. Q equal to one is the first massive state of string theory. I, I will do it covariantly. So I will do it to all the states. I will just write down. Okay. Now you see here is the first is, is sorry, this is was not here. The first case when B minus two comes into the game. Because I can build up something which is the uh, following. Ghost number zero. Let's see, ghost number zero, what happened? We have B minus two, C one. You see? 
This is exactly conformal weight minus, uh, so uh, minus two plus one gives you minus one. So this means the energy is exactly plus one, okay? As ghost number zero, because the ghost number of B cancels the ghost number of C, fine. And what, what else? Well, I have this one, which is X minus one mu. So at the ghost number zero, at the Gauss number zero, I find that these two states, these states, and this, of course, this is also acting on the vacuum, okay? I have two states of this time. Let's see a Gauss number one. Gauss number one. So what are the states? Yes, what are the states? Uh, yeah, here. So C, C naught, B minus two, C one. Again, as always, uh, there is a duplication, okay? So this uh, goes number zero. If I multiply it by C naught, I produce something which has goes number uh, one and uh, the same energy. And the same things happen here. We have C naught, X minus one, mu. Then we have a C one, X minus two, mu. And C one, X minus one, mu, X minus one, mu. And finally, what else? C minus one. C minus one. Okay. So all the, these are the possible fields. So this is one state. So there are D states here. There are D states of this type. And there are D times D plus one over two because these are symmetric states. And here there's one state here. So maybe, I mean, in the calculation of, of Carlo in these lectures, uh, he w at some point at the first level, you find out in the light cone, what you get? In the light cone, you get x minus 2i, where i go from 1 to 24. Those are the li light cone, uh, light cone um, creation operator. And then we have xi minus 1, xj minus 2, uh, minus 1, OK? And of course, this is symmetric. And then if you count how many states you get, you get exactly uh, on-shell massive spin two fields. So this gives you on-shell Massive spin plus uh, spin two fields in 26 dimensions. Okay, in 26 dimensions. Now I will show you now that actually I indeed obtain the same calculations. So I, w I will leave you. I will leave you the enigmistics. So the combinatorics. You can do it. Uh, I mean, on the train, okay, or in the bathroom, whatever you want. <laughs> you can do these uh, funny calculations. And it happens the following, that if you calculate the, the P1 T, so the, 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 the character, the expansion of the character at this level, you end up with this beautiful expression, which is the following, one minus T. Hmm? Then I get the one plus D, times t, then I get the d plus d, d plus 1 over 2 plus 1, times t squared plus t squared 1 plus d. Tuck. Hmm? So do it by yourself. So you, you, you must actually list all the other states. So there is a bunch of states. So Ghost number zero, ghost number one, and then we end up with ghost number two and ghost number three. Okay? Uh, so, but we have a duplication of the cohomology. So, we will find out again the same states just duplicated again here. Okay? For example, ghost number three, I can give you the states. The states are the following C naught, C minus two, C minus one. No, C and C one. And then the other states is C naught, C uh, minus one, C one, X minus one, mu. So these are the states that number three. So you can do it by yourself, just by listing them. And then you plug it in, you get the biggest expression. You can rewrite in this way. Good. So then let's do the calculations. Let's do the calculations. So I take a limit. T goes to one of P1 T of these expressions. And then you end up exactly with, the, where is it? Oh, here. Uh, so you get, uh, yes, minus d minus 2, this plus 1 over 2. Mm? And this is a massive spin 2. 
spin to in in d dimensions a massive spin to the dimensions of course also here there is interpretation okay uh, I can read from this expression I can read this expression in my fields so what is the interpretation of this field well of course these guys here uh, so this uh, right this guy right this uh, let's say here these guys here hmm? these guys here are the massless spin to object but uh, sorry so 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 here okay so this is the massless spin to object and this guy d plus one is called stuckelder field okay this is stuckelder field okay and these guys here one plus d one plus d are again in the same way here you have a ghost c and ghost c bar here we have a ghost which carries an index mu, and this is an anti-ghost which carries an index mu. Because uh, you see, these are the ghost. Uh, I mean, how you can, uh, sorry, let me do this uh, small um, consideration. How you can create, how you can have a sp massive spin to fields uh, in the dimension. So, uh, well, you know that, uh, I mean, if you consider, if you consider, um, Einstein gravity, which is a uh, produce a uh, spin two fields, okay, so spin two fields, uh, of course, it is massless fields, okay, if you do the, uh, if you com construct the wave operators, you immediately find out that it is a, uh, is a mass, a massless fields, okay. However, there is a way to add the mass term to just to, to free graviton in any dimensions is called Pauli, fiercely Pauli mass terms, okay, which is a uh, gauge invariant, okay, so you can add this, which, okay, gauge invariant, which is, uh, respect some of the property, you can add these mass terms to the spin two fields. However, however, it turns out the following, that this mass term, okay, you don't know really how to create a mass term for a spin two graviton, okay, which actually respect the symmetry of, of the theory, okay? Namely, of course, the mass terms, it breaks the reparameterization variance. Okay, this is obvious. Uh, it is not gauge invariant. Uh, at, at the three, uh, at three level, it is, but you can build this mass term by using Stuckelberg mechanism. Do you know what is the Stuckelberg mechanism? Well, Stuckelberg mechanism, it works in this way. Suppose that you have a gauge boson, okay, a, 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 an abelian gauge boson, so a Maxwell field, as I was showing before, and you want to give a mass to these terms, okay? One way to do it is the following. Of course, it has a gauge symmetry, which is the usual uh, abelian gauge symmetry. You want to give a mass to them, so you do the following. You add the scalar field, okay, you add the scalar field, you extend uh, your symmetry to the scalar fields, okay, and then you perform a, trans a gauge transformation in such a way that uh, the gauge boson is really uh, eating the, the the scalar fields. Okay. Now it is it is like in the Higgs X mechanism. So in the Higgs mechanism, you have some uh, fields that are, are are eaten, so are absorbed in the, in the gauge boson, and so the two degrees of freedom of the gauge boson becomes three degrees of freedom, which are the ma the, the states of uh, massive gauge bosons in the dimension or in four dimensions. Okay. In the Higgs field you are left with one field, which is the Higgs field, which is the physical field. For a massless uh, abelian gauge field, you can do it uh, without any remnant, okay? So the Higgs field is coming, is coming in the standard model, or let's say in the electroweak interaction, because you have an SU2 group, okay? But for the U1 part, you can do it only by Stuckelberg, and there is no Higgs field, okay? So if there is no SU2 interaction for the standard model, you don't have any Higgs field. You can have only a Stuckelberg. So the Stuckelberg field is something which can be reabsorbed in the gauge bosons. Of course, you break the symmetry. You break the gauge symmetry, so the action is no longer gauge invariant because the uh, by the gauge symmetry you absorb these uh, states in the redefinition of the gauge boson so you have a massive gauge bosons and no scalar at all okay but the no gauge symmetry uh, any longer in string theory uh, so you can ask yourself okay how can create masses for all the states of course you know that there is a tachyon but a tachyon is no problem we have seen okay for from a uh, massless state, so at the um, conformal weight zero at the massless level, you have a Maxwell theory, no problem with mass. But if you go higher, you know that all the fields have a mass, okay? Because you have a massive state, so you have an infinite tower of massive states. All the masses of those states are created by Stuckelberg mechanisms. So, namely, you have uh, the spin two object 
a spin one object and spin zero object, okay? And the spin one is eating the spin zero, the spin two is eating the spin one, okay? And at the end, you have a spin two which is massive. Now, if you do the counting on the states, you immediately see that the counting is really give you a massive spin two. As to spin three, well, how it happens? A spin three, you have a massive spin three fields, uh, okay? So this means you have a spin three, spin two, spin two, spin one, and spin zero. The one is eating the zero, the two is eating the one, and so on. At the end of the day, you have a spin three massive states. So all the mass in this in string theory are generated by Stuckerberg mechanisms, which is a kind of a Higgs mechanism for a string theory. Okay, so these guys here, d plus one here, appearing here, is just the Stuckerberg field of the, m uh, of the, uh, let's say, this is a Stuckerberg field, so this is a scalar, and together produce a massive spin two. And those uh, c mu and c mu bar are the, ga are the gauge symmetry. Now, what is the gauge symmetry for spin two fields? Uh, r uh, remember what I say about Hilbert Einstein action. Hilbert Einstein action has a, a gauge symmetry, which is just a reparameterization invariant. Reparameterization invariance uh, is uh, it is parameterized by the by a vector. Okay, so this means that uh, so if you have a graviton, for example, let me call it the graviton G mu nu. The BRST symmetry or the gauge symmetry of the graviton is just these guys uh, plus d nu x mu. So this is the, uh, is the gauge parameter for the gauge symmetry for the graviton at the free level. I'm mean, not talking about a non interacting tier, just only the three level. That's the gauge symmetry of the spin two, massless spin two fields. Okay. So when you do the BRST symmetry, this becomes the ghost here, the ghost. And as I show you, if I do, if I want to do a quantization of uh, Hilbert Steins action at the, let's say at the free level, okay, I will end up. In, in, uh, in action which contains also the, uh, the kinetics for the Gauss field. And I need an anti-Gauss field for the kinetic terms, okay? And these are exactly those states. So, you can do the game, okay? You can produce, you start raising uh, the, the, the level and then you add more fields and you build up your covariant spectrum of the theory. Yes? Uh, for two reasons. Well, because because you are you know what are the irreducible representation of Lorentz symmetry first. Okay. Second thing is you know they are massive states. Okay. Uh, so you know what are the irreducible representation of massive states uh, according to uh, Lorentz symmetry. Okay. And in this case there is only one possibility. And then here is it. Then you can say, well, what happens if I go higher? Okay. For example, you can have a multiple. You can have multiple fields uh, with the degrees of freedom. Okay. Okay, one way to distinguish correctly, if you want to distinguish also this, okay, but there is a, the Lorentz symmetry, okay, if you want to, do, to uh, consider also the Lorentz symmetry, you can do a character formula also for the Lorentz symmetry, whatever. So you can, uh, you can build the charges of the rotations, okay, so because uh, those states, you see, those, those states, uh, okay, rotates under some symmetry, okay, so you can build up really character formula for that, okay, namely, instead of only taking into account the charge according to the ghost, you can take the charge according to how this rotates, okay? okay? So you have a, a dinking the composition of your states, okay? And then you can do a character formula for those, and then you can read exactly how they transform under the Lorentz transformation, and then automatically you know which kind of representation you are considering. That's right, that's right. You, you can do it, I mean, it's easy, uh, at the first levels, it's rather easy to do it in this way, okay? Uh, you know, go higher in, with the spin, you, you can have, I mean, uh, go higher in the spins, you create, you open up other, uh, you, you are open up other rigid trajectories, essentially. So, uh, you have a massive, then you start to have uh, more states uh, uh, at the same level with different spins, okay? For example, uh, if I remember correctly, at the spin four, you create a scalar. There is a scalar which is not in the same multiple of the spin four, for example, okay? And it actually, you can, now, this scalar is reproducing now a new rigid trajectory, okay? A new set of fields along this line. And then at some point, there is a new scalar, and then again, uh, you 
you open up a new a new track. And those are the regular trajectories, uh, uh, which tells you how many spins you have for a given mass terms. So there are there is a plot which tells you how many spins you have of these states. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, so, sorry, let me f finish. Uh, just wanted to say, this way to do it in a covariant way, I mean, in the light cone, uh, y y you don't distinguish them because uh, you are somehow, you reduce into light cone and then everything becomes uh, com completely, uh, you, l you lose the, the Lorentz symmetry in 10 dimensions, you, you lose the control on which kind of representation you have, okay? In fact, if you try to do string field theory in the light cone, you can do it, let's say, well, let's go off shell a little bit in a different way, it is not consistent because you, do, you, can do, you cannot really distinguish which, which kind of representation you are taking into account. In the covariant way that I'm doing here, you really see what are you doing and which kind of states you are talking about. Please, please, please. Mm -hmm. Well, the symmetric tensor, this is the symmetric tensor here. Yeah. But it's less than the symmetric tensor. Of course, the spin two, a spin two massive states is less than the symmetric tensor, of course. I mean, symmetric tensor, symmetric tensor, let's, let's, let's count in, in, uh, in, uh, in a four dimension, okay? In four dimension, symmetric tensor is how many degrees of freedom is? So four is a 10, okay? Uh, but then it's a massive, okay? Uh, of, of course, you have a, a gauge symmetry, blah, blah, blah. So you know that, I mean, you start from a symmetric tensor for a massless state, you end up with the two degrees of freedom. In fact, you have a 10, which is the decrease of a symmetric tensor, minus four for the ghost, minus four for the anti-ghost. So it is 10 minus eight gives you plus two plus degrees of freedom, which has exactly the two degrees of freedom of the graviton, spin two, spin minus two, helicity plus two, helicity minus two. If you have uh, the massive one, okay, you want to have uh, the massive one, actually, you give it five uh, degrees of freedoms. Uh, and indeed, if you do the counting, it, it gives correctly. I mean, it is not the degrees of freedom of, of the symmetric tensor, but uh, you have the symmetries and uh, which cancel exactly that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Of course, uh, you don't have to, I mean, to do, the, I mean, if you don't really want to do this game, if you don't really want to do this game uh, to each other, I, gi I give you, I give you the formula. Okay, the formula is the following. The formula is the following. It is one minus t. It always happens this one minus t in front. One minus t of a q divided by the uh, yes. 1 minus q over t times n equal to 1 infinity, 1 minus t to the q to the n, 1 minus uh, 1 over uh, t q to the n divided by 1 minus q to the n times d. Okay, now here I miss, okay, let me put just a number here. Okay, I miss here some numbers here, okay. In principle, okay, in principle, you can have some numbers here, but if the dimension D is equal exactly to 26, okay, uh, this number here gives you one, okay, we fix it, okay. However, if D is not uh, 26, uh, then you can have uh, some uh, power of Q to some uh, powers uh, which uh, take into account that uh, if D is 26, the central charge is not completely uh, cancelled out, okay. So this is the character formula. If you do the expansion of this expression here, you get all the states in each level. So you, if you do, you have to do a serious expansion of Q, uh, of Q, okay. These two states here, this, the states that appear in here, are exactly the three ghosts that uh, we are playing with at the beginning, okay? And in this expansion, you, you have to expand this ob horrible object, uh, which, of course, it contains an infinite number of the states, okay? And this is the infinite number of states that you can, you can have. Oof. Right, okay, so this is the character formula for the bosonic things, which gives you the covariant spectrum of the theory. Okay, I think, uh, uh, yes, the only things, the only last things I want to do it, uh, uh, one second, 
12, 13. The only things I want to do it is the is the following. If I find the notes. Okay. Okay, uh, the only thing, uh, the last minutes, uh, I, 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 I want to do the following. So, regarding about normal ordering uh, and regarding all these details you find in the books, uh, but the only things I want to show you is the following, okay? So, we have two operators here in the game. Right. One operator are the so let's consider ag again uh, the BC systems. Okay, so we have uh, the uh, the Virasoro uh, generators, the Virasoro algebra in the BC systems. I, I wrote it before, but uh, you also have a Gauss charge. Okay, and a Gauss charge, the Gauss charge again has a Virasoro expansion. The Gauss charge is a Gauss current, so you do again an expansion of modes. Okay, and this Gauss charge has the following form: B goes to Z. Okay, and then uh, let me write down in this way: BP CM minus P. Again, here uh, you need the normal ordering. Okay, normal ordering means the following. So I can rewrite. Uh, sorry, you need the normal ordering when m is equal to zero. So uh, when m is equal to zero, then of course you need the normal ordering between these states. So for example, for g zero, g naught, which counts just the Gauss number, the Gauss charge. Okay, the normal ordering is the following. Okay, is uh, sorry, I can write down in this way: is uh, p minus equal to minus two, b p c minus p minus uh, P greater than or equal to 1, to minus 1, sorry, and then you get the C minus P, BP. Hmm? So this is the formula for the normal ordering for the Gauss charge. No, okay. So now if you play a little bit, uh, if you play a little bit uh, with this uh, operator here, you find out the, fol the following algebra. Hmm? You find out LM, BC, with LN, BC. That gives you M minus N, L M minus N. So indeed they are Virasoro generators. Then you get a m plus one over six M minus thirteen M cube delta M plus N comma zero. This uh, thirteen is the famous thirteen that tells you that the D must be twenty six. Hmm? Then we have LM times GJN, again for the BC systems, okay? That gives you the following formula. It gives you minus JM plus N hmm, plus 3 half of M times M plus 1 of delta M plus N comma 0. Okay. This is this algebra here. And then there is a one... Last bits, which is the following. If you compute the JM with the JN, that gives you uh, M delta M plus N comma zero. Hmm? So this is the algebra. You can check that, that this algebra is completely consistent. Of course, there are Jacobi identities. Uh, because there are Jacobi identities among those operators. So you can calculate the Jacobi identity, and you can check that this is consistent. Hmm? Now, by using this, uh, By using this, uh, you can do the following. You can do the following. Hmm? By using this, you can do the following. Let me cancel here. If you calculate what is L1, commutation relation by minus 1, you compute the commutation relation acting on some states, uh, chi, Hmm? You end up that this gives you the Gauss charge hmm? plus three of this guy, chi. Hmm? 
Now, if you calculate, uh, um, okay, and then if you calculate the following things, Q acting on L1, G minus 1, chi, that gives you, okay, so if you calculate this bracket, okay, you get the phi G naught chi plus 3 phi times chi. So now if you do the calculation on this side, okay, so here I'm doing the calculation of this commutator here acting on these guys. I do it on the reverse side, so you have to take the uh, emission conjugate of this expression acting on this phi. If you do the calculations here, it happens, okay, you see, this is the charge of these fields, so you get the Q of the, of the states phi times phi chi equal to the charge of chi, plus 3 of phi chi. Hmm? So this means the following. So this is the ghost charge of the state phi. This is the ghost charge of the state chi. And this is just this number 3. So this means if you want to s s uh, solve this equation, so it means that q phi is equal to q chi plus 3. Okay. So this means that uh, in order to have something which is non-zero, Okay, something which is non-zero from this equation, you need uh, that the charge of these states uh, is equal to the charge of these states plus 3. Okay, so you have to saturate these uh, charges in this way. Hmm? So the difference between the charge of these states and the charge of these states must be 3. Okay? This uh, 3 here is just the Gauss charge when you do we did the, the integration C0 C1 and C and DC minus 1, okay? Do you remember all these guys here carries Gauss number plus 1? All these guys here carries Gauss number plus 1. So the Berezin integral with respect to those integrals uh, produce a negative Gauss number. So this means here, then when you calculate an expression like, uh, as I said, the chi Q chi, okay, this guy must have Gauss number 3 in total in order to compensate the minus Gauss number 3 here. Okay, so for the bosonic strings, for the bosonic particle, for the fermionic particle, for all the cases that we have analyzed so far, there was a geometrical way to interpret uh, this uh, saturation rule. Namely, we said what are the Gauss field, and then because of the Gauss field, we understand which kind of the Gauss uh, we have to pick up from this expression here. Now here there is, a, 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 let's say, from the Virasoro algebra, there is a way to understand actually what is the Gauss number here. Okay, so this is called Ghost Anomaly. Ghost Anomaly. And because of the Ghost Anomaly, you can, inter you can understand which kind of uh, integration you have to do it. Okay, let's say that this is the last thing that I want to say. Of course, uh, we can make uh, several lectures about this point. So how to compute the Gauss anomaly and from the Gauss anomaly to recover which kind of integration you have to do it in order to pick, pick up exactly the contribution. Okay. So the fact that here there are three Gauss uh, here is due to the fact that the, you have a Gauss anomaly equal to uh, plus three. Okay. There are other ways to see it. For example, from, uh, from correlation function computation point of view, these uh, three ghosts uh, actually are coming from uh, uh, fixing the Möbius, uh, the Möbius gauge symmetry of the, of the sphere. Okay. There are several ways to do it, so I'm not going to enter, enter in these details. Uh, I, will, I will tell you, I mean, I will um, suggest you to do the same exercise for, for example, for, for fermionic strings, okay? Fermionic strings, of course, is much more complicated. You have uh, uh, another system, not only BC ghost, but you have a beta gamma ghost. Do you remember that in the case of fermionic particle, we introduced a beta gamma ghost. You have a fermionic constraints plus the bosonic constraints. So you have a super virasoro generators, so super virasoro generators. So you have a, and then when you construct a super virasoro generator, there are two representations of Virasor generators. There are neve schwarz representation and Ramon representation. If you go with the game, you build up the full uh, covariance spectra of superstrings. Okay? It's much more complicated, but you can build up a, a, a partition, let's say, a character formula as I wrote here. Okay. So this, uh, the, I mean, you will find the, this on the, on the notes uh, that I put on the, on the web. Uh, I'll say, uh, first, I will put it uh, on the, um, homepage of our school 
and written, okay? But then I will try to produce the, the LaTeX version uh, for the archive, okay? So I will hope that I give you a bit, at least some ideas uh, that you don't find in the books, uh, some relation between stream field theory and how to build up target space theory from a, a model. Uh, of course, there are research in these directions. Uh, for example, super string field theory, nobody knows how to do it completely. There are sectors of the theory that are understood, but sectors that are not understood. And therefore, I mean, this is a matter of research. Hope that you enjoy the lectures. Uh, thank you very much for your attentions.